Hello and welcome to the Y2PMB podcast where I, Soraz, and one other guest talk about Y2PMB and everything surrounding it. This is episode 2 featuring Jab 50 yen Jab has been in this community for nearly a decade and has taken an active role in hosting panels at various conventions. You may also know him for starting the Uh Oh Stinky meme or perhaps for hosting the Rhythm Having Y2PMB collabs throughout the years. Whether you love him or hate him, he's one of the more outspoken people in this community and has proven that Y2PMB should be given the limelight it deserves. In this episode, we talk about his Y2PMB beginnings, his experience hosting panels, and his view of the community aspect of Y2PMB. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy. When did you uh, start Y2PMB and like what kind of caught your eye with it? Um, I started YTP um, and YTP and V a little bit later. I think I I started making YTP in 2009, and then I started dabbling into YTP and V in 2010, and then it just kind of went from there. I found out about YTP because um, I've been on the internet for as long as I can remember, like three or four years old, and um, as like as like I got a little bit older. When I started using the computer more and my uh, family was, like, trusting me to use it more, I tried to, like, find my footing in, like, some sort of online community. I've dabbled in a few places. Like, I went on Newgrounds for a bit. I went on Something Awful for a bit. And over time, I just, um... Funnily enough, the first Yitsu Poop I ever saw was Freddy Ruin Sam's Life. That's a... <laughs> that's a classic. <laughs> yeah, that one's really good. And the first YTPMV I ever saw... Well, it's debatable if it's a YTPMV, but the Billy Mays gangster rap was something that, um... A friend of mine showed me when I moved back to America, and um, those two videos like really fascinated me. So I started uh, dabbling in that, and I think that's a lot of people's stories where they're trying to find a community, but then YouTube poop stuck with them because I think it's like the easiest barrier to entry when it comes to mm. uh, people learning how to make videos and such. Because like when when people like Smosh and Shane Dawson were getting popular back in the day, like the standards were still a bit too high, where you had to like get good camera equipment, get good lighting equipment, have to write comedy skits and everything, which wasn't easy enough for everyone, but just uh, having Spongebob say he's gay, that's very easy for a lot of people to get into. So <laughs> so yeah. that, so that I feel like that uh, my story is kind of similar to other people. Then um, this is kind of embarrassing to say, but what really got me into YTP and V and made me kind of leave YTP was the uh, My Little Pony era. Like, that was getting all popular, and a bunch of people started making videos from that, and that's what made me more uh, passionate about the music side of it. So that was what kind of stuck with me ever since. And it's going to be 10 years for me on the latter half of 2010s, or, or 2020, so that's going to be scary to think about. Yeah, I've been doing this shit for, like, half my life. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, I think... Um, uh, but, I mean, like, you're in good company. Uh, Torges, Phazon... Zarlable's getting close. Uh, yeah, yeah, those else, guys have uh, been around for a couple years longer than I have, so they were already, like, uh, making stuff by the time I joined. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, it's not so much embarrassing to talk about now. I feel like we're past that, like, purgatory area of MLP being, like, super, super embarrassing. Yeah. I, like, lots of people can easily admit, yeah, that's what got me into the communities I'm in now. I like to call that era the Pony Boomer era. Because, like, <laughs> the the community was still fairly niche back then, but then, like, once My Little Pony came out, suddenly everyone wanted to do YTPMV because of all the fucking uh, Renard YTPMVs and, like, Banjo-Kazooie YTPMVs that got, like, millions of views. And, like, all of a sudden, all these new people started coming. It, it, it so I, I've heard a couple of people compare it to when TF2 became free-to-play, and then all these mm -hmm. new people just came out of nowhere and just, like, temporarily ruined the community. <laughs> Yeah, it was really funny to witness, and like it's funny knowing that I was one of the contributors. But I I'm glad I'm glad that like I moved past that, and I'm kind of one of the only people that stuck around, which is good because that era really needed to die, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And you know, there there were quite a few good people who came from it, but you know, kind of after that died, their like YTPMV career kind of died with it almost. Yeah, the death of um of the My Little Pony craze plus the collab fever, as my uh, friend Rob calls it, I think both kind of killed it because not only did people kind of stop wanting to make pony YTPMVs, but a lot of people kind of stopped wanting to make full YTPMVs altogether. Like, I, I noticed this in 2014 that everyone just wanted to do collabs, and mm -hmm. that kind of broke everyone's motivation too because everyone's like, well, why make our own video when we can bring 20 people to do this song? And every single song under the sun got their own collab, and everyone just got burnt out. It's kind of like how uh, when Guitar Hero like died in 2009 because way too much shit came out for it, 
and there was too much to consume yeah. that the community just kind of burned itself out and then it kind of died. And I, I would say White DPMV died around the tail end of 2014 and then all the way up until Undertale became popular. And I think Undertale was what brought White DPMV back, um, back on its feet because so many good White DPMVs came out of that soundtrack. Yeah, it, it really helped my motivation. Uh, I can attest to that for sure. Like the all the genocide white PMVs, those are all amazing, and it kind of like revived joke white PMVs altogether. Oh yeah, that's also true because um a lot of people like 2013 was a really good year for joke videos, and then 2014, so many people just didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, so I guess we'll move on to the next question. So um obviously like the internet specifically TikTok other avenues was they were really overtaken by uh mr uh oh stinky <laughs> otherwise known as lay monk as i hate to call it is it lay monk or, or lay monk i never i never oh, really I'd, figured that out i guess i never figured that out either yeah but i've never heard a, someone it's say a shitty that name mouth. yeah it's a pretty bad name <laughs> so you know obviously like uh oh stinky had been a joke for a while but like does starting a meme like that, is that something that you enjoy? Or is it more of just like a headache having your content stolen and seeing it grow as big as it is? It's kind of both. Um, if if I truly started this meme is debatable, but I think I definitely coined it because Lay Monk was a picture that was popular for a few years. And um, this YouTuber called Real Human Bean for You was like the guy who narrated it. And that was also a few years old. So like technically he started it, but I guess I coined it. So... I, I, I guess I'm still responsible for that being big. And at first I was flattered because, you know, I'm 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 never that type of person you see in the white TV community that gets really pissy when something they make gets popular, which is always something the community did that I was weirded out about. But mm -hmm. when it became to the point where people were starting to steal my video, cutting my name out of it, and taking credit for it, that's what was um really bothering me because YouTube poop and white TPMV are the easiest forms of content to get stolen and manipulate people with because your face isn't in it. A lot of people don't think to put their watermarks in it. And the concept is so odd that you can switch the context around to make it more appealing to normies. Like, that's why Cursed Videos is really popular because honestly, that name probably is, is better than YouTube poop because it's not restricted to a platform like YouTube, and we also don't have a name that's, like, you know, related to fecal matter, <laughs> which is always something <laughs> yeah. that blocked, which is always something that stopped uh, this craft from getting more popular. Like, a lot of people think other reasons, but it's definitely the name that made people, because everyone just thought we were making scat fetish videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the name, the name is pretty, haha, <laughs> shitty, if I do, but, uh, <laughs> god damn it, I'm so mad at myself. <laughs> but, like, there's quite a few memes that started from uh like YouTube poop altogether. Like I know I re I recall from Magfest, uh Morgan was talking about that quite a bit. And yeah. I don't I don't want to give it too much credit, but like I I do agree definitely. Like memes in general have just kind of taken a turn to just like weird I guess YouTube poop-ish videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, and honestly, I'm really glad for it, but at the same time, it is pretty annoying because all of a sudden, all of our videos get stolen, and it it, it happens, but yeah. Yeah, but our community seems to be the biggest victim of it. Like, I, I, I totally agree with what Morgan was saying because, um, cause like, a lot of memes today are memes that, like, mock other things, and that was kind of the intention with YouTube Poop from the beginning was just uh, taking existing content and manipulating it around to give it a more bizarre context, and that's what memes are today. A lot of people like to make fun of past things like it's now a normal thing to make fun of the fact that everyone was using Windows Movie Maker back in the day, which is something that mm -hmm. wasn't really popular three years ago. But we were all making those jokes and YTP and Vs. I mean, hell, the screaming dog sample that everyone uses like has was made in Windows Movie Maker and people always make that joke that, that it has that Windows Movie Maker sliding text like <laughs> we were doing that years before it got really big. And um, a lot of people don't realize that. And because they don't realize that, a lot of people will, would take the rants that Morgan went on during our panel a little bit confusing. But I, I, I know people that know what she's talking about, like, agrees. Because, I, I mean, I mean it, might, it might be a little bit exaggerated, but I agree for the most part that a lot of the meme culture that we see today were people that were analyzing what YouTube poop was. And they kind of saw that, and then they took it to something that could be more appealing to the mainstream. And it worked. And sometimes I think we just have to blame ourselves for that. because. One, we didn't brand ourselves very well, 
and to a lot of the community was very very pessimistic and uh bitter to the idea of any of our content getting popular so mm-hmm. it, especially older people when they start complaining about how our community got left behind I'm, i sometimes I just have to look back and think well we had 10 whole years to figure it out and we never did so now we're just kind of paying the price for it yeah that's that's pretty true honestly internet communities in general face that quite often i feel yeah uh like tf2 is kind of facing that right now but that's you know a little bit more out of their control but like yeah, yeah. like uh like valve ruining their own game kind of uh kind, <laughs> yeah. kind of factored in that but tf2 also had the uh the same sort of pessimism like i said earlier when tf2 became free to play everyone was so mad and like they were they were understandably mad because they didn't like the people that paid for the game didn't really get any awards and um but also like they were also getting there was like the string of videos that came out called noobs noobs everywhere i remember that and i'm just like well like this is your community getting bigger and your community getting more noticed isn't that what you wanted like didn't people mm-hmm. complain about dead servers back in the day here's your wish of new people and now you're upset yeah basically so you've edited for mother's basement mac make muscles excuse me and uh you did a video or did you do more for uh did you know gaming um i uh, or was it just the one that was just one audio gig because i was friends with the uh with the person that was doing the voiceover but um i didn't really get any work from them after that but when it comes to more consistent work yeah it was more towards uh mother's basement which is an anime channel uh Matt McMuscles, who is from Super Best Friends, who started doing his old, his uh his own stuff, and then I also do a few things for Cross Counter TV, which if you don't know, is owned by uh, Pog Champ, that Twitch emote that gets spammed everywhere, of him oh, making those I, like that fish lip face. Yeah, I I didn't know that. That's yeah, funny. it's funny to think that whenever I see a Twitch chat, uh, or I or I see someone on Twitter posting Pog Champ, I'm just like, that's 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 my boss. <laughs> like it's really <laughs> it's really funny to think about. So you. I'm I'm assuming you learned editing through Y2P and Y2PMV. Mm-hmm. So how easily did that transfer to like these kind of longer style serious edits that you're getting paid for? Um, it gave me a, a huge advantage actually because when you edit YTPs and YTPMVs, you are doing more cutting, more audio shifting, and more transitions than the average YouTube video does. Like. Um, I don't know how many people actually in this community watch uh, video essays and like reviews and everything, but the pace in those videos are so much slower. And because YTPs and YTPMV by nature are incredibly fast, that gives us the advantage that a lot of people don't have when they start doing it. And um, that that was what really gave me a head start because when I started dabbling more into into YouTube stuff, um, that was the first thing people were noticing that like my editing was a bit more unique than the average person because everyone else's inspirations were like, you know, normal boots people or, you know, John Tron or uh Space Hamster, like those people. So like they they were copying a style versus how a lot of white TPers and white TPM viewers kind of find their own styles by just fucking around in Vegas. And like that's that's the thing a lot of people outside of the white TP and white TPV community are afraid to do is just dabble it in their self and try to like find their own creativity in that there's too many people outside this community that are trying to be someone else rather than being themselves and when you take a craft like ytp and ytpmv uh into like it, it's like a genre that doesn't really have a personality really it's really just what you do with it because ytp and ytpmv it's just kind of a combination of everything on the internet just being completely turned into crap <laughs> And there's a yeah. and there's a there's there's a really good uh advantage there because like if you just don't give a fuck and you just create something that that you're only entertaining yourself with, you're going to come out the better person with that. And I think that's what helps a lot of people in this community get a head start in the professional field if these people decide to uh take what they've learned and do something professional with it. I hope I, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Is there is there like more satisfaction to editing for larger channels other than just like money and connections basically um i think just the fact that all the years i spent um like making these videos didn't go to waste because there's a lot of yeah. people that there's a lot of people in this community that get very existential if all the time they they spent making these videos like ever went anywhere like i know a lot of people that became drug addicts i knew a lot of people that became super depressed and they're just like stuck doing dead end jobs that they're not proud of and I just look at them and I'm like, man, you guys are so talented. 
there's so many people in this community that are so talented and i and i get that not everyone wants to go on the entertainment field but like it's got it's got to be better than what you're doing right now like it's got to be better than like working some shitty retail position then come home and smoke weed and then that's your day like there mm-hmm. had there had there has to be more to it and um so like just just knowing that i didn't go that route and i was able to um take what i've learned making white tpmvs into a into a more professional route uh it just knows that like it wasn't be it wasn't put in vain because especially my family would always get mad at me making videos and my teachers were like this isn't going to take you anywhere so kind of that spite also helps too just like knowing that like yeah. me slacking off from school uh and and like learning videos and just me like canceling plans to make videos were probably some of the best decisions i've ever made and it's and, and that's super similar to like most esports players because they know that they're good they know that they can make it but they just need that like initial zone before they make anything yeah uh, exactly to get past that yeah and to get and, over that hump and I, I feel bad for esports players because that's even harder to explain because with video editing at least you can just tell someone oh you watch a tv show right that's what i'm doing and then sometimes they'll figure it out but when but with esports players they just play the game and it's it's still a very foreign thing for a lot of older people to realize that people can make money playing video games now and some people just can't grasp that concept because they were they were raised all their life saying that video games are dumb and they're for kids and they're only used as a, as a pastime. And a lot of people aren't realizing that because of internet entertainment, people can use their skills and turn that into entertainment because the esports are essentially performers, which is so much pressure and so much uh, improv on the spot uh, stuff to make you a valuable person. So having that combined with the entire world looking down on you like i think the simpsons even did a, a skit about that recently um like yeah I, I definitely think esports people have it worse than than video editors in that regard so like i, I really respect people that don't listen to public pressure and they just do what they want to do because it might suck uh throughout the first years i mean hell i i remember having my laptop being taken away from me and one time it got smashed on the floor because people were upset at what i was doing but i don't regret it for a second it's it's mm-hmm. a, it's all a matter of uh, waiting until your time shines. And for everyone who's out there listening, as long as you keep trying, I guarantee, I promise you that your time will come. It could be take two years, it could take ten years, but it'll come as long as you keep trying. Yeah, and the barrier to entry is so low. Uh, Omni and I talked about this uh, on the last episode, and like anybody with like a normal three hundred dollar laptop and an internet connection could make videos. They can edit, learn Photoshop, and make pictures and stuff. It's uh pretty crazy to think how low the barrier is nowadays. Yeah, like three hundred dollars can get you like an eight gig RAM laptop, and that's like that's enough for you to start video editing. Like it's insane. Yeah, we don't have to worry about the Windows XP or Vista machines of old. Yeah, like computers are good now. <laughs> like we can, <laughs> like it's it's so crazy how low the barrier to entry is and how people still don't take advantage of it Mm -hmm. but uh it makes sense that like parents and older people don't understand like the video game aspect but in your experience do they not understand the career of video editing it's more so the fact that the internet can be a career i think that's what a lot of people get because a lot of people know that filmmaking is work because you know older people still like went to movie theaters and they still like have cable televisions and everything but they a lot of people i've realized think that the only way you can make it a real job is if you do make it in the movie and and television industry. It definitely took well about over half a decade to convince people in my in real life that the internet was profitable. Um, I remember when I was still partnered with Maker Studios before they dropped everyone. I got my first check for like eighty five dollars, and um, I remember like my parents gave it to me, and I opened it up. And uh, what really helped was when Maker Studios was bought by Disney. So when I opened up the check, Mickey Mouse's stupid face was on there. So I got to bend the I got to bend around being a little bit being like, see, Disney saw my videos as profitable. So <laughs> so I got partnered with because with, like I, I'm technically right. Maker Studios is a Walt Disney Corporation and Disney writes the checks. So I was able to like ride that D word a lot. So when I saw that when I was showing people a check for Disney and I was telling people that that was for my YouTube videos, that was when people were finally realizing, oh, shit, like. What this kid is doing is not a waste of time if Disney's fucking uh, recognizing him. And um, 
I think that's the challenge for a lot of people whenever they're making videos online is just to show them that the, that online is like a new medium for people to make a profit off of. And that's just the, you know, that, that that's just the consequences of jumping on anything early. Like, we're still on the very early rock and roll phases of the internet becoming a viable career. And I think, mm -hmm. um, I think within the next five or ten years, it'll be completely normalized. But seeing the internet grow from the early 2000s to now has been a really wild ride seeing the origins and seeing how it's still looked down upon by the masses but hey as as our generation becomes the uh dominant one soon that's gonna change and i'm really excited about that yeah i'm super excited too and like a lot of and even for music as well like i listen to a lot of electronic and pretty much everybody that i listen to probably started uh on the internet and then grew from there except for like you know maybe like the 35 and up uh fucking tiestos of the world yeah but all all of those people like uh i was so surprised the other day uh jack jack cates oh my yeah, god yeah. i did not even realize that was that was insane uh he was an old watch pmv or eight res on uh, yeah I I'm pronouncing yeah that right. no you're right yeah me and eight res on go back funnily enough we actually talked on a random discord server two weeks ago and i, was, I think that was the first time we talked to each other in like seven years and to see yeah. that he's actually doing some really cool stuff. Because I remember back in the day, he always talked about wanting to do music, and people in the community would make fun of him for that. But seeing that he still like kept going with it is really impressive. And a lot of people that you listen to, a lot of people I listen to in EDM, yeah, it's so insane that like they just started fucking around in FL Studio, and now they're these big personalities going on tour with people like Tiesto. And I'm really proud that Tiesto like, saw something in that. Like He didn't like shun it away like other older artists did. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I just went to a space laces concert and he his like music stuff actually started on new grounds and then <laughs> in like 2013 2014 oh, he like transitioned yeah. to like actual edm and stuff which is just insane i when i was younger when i was like 10 maybe 9 i used to listen to like uh new grounds music and would like go on there all the time yeah the new grounds audio portal i remember i i have an ipod classic somewhere in my room it's an 80 gig iPod classic, and I'm pretty sure like half of that is filled with uh, music from the Newgrounds audio portal. Like the music yeah, community was so there cool. was insane because the barrier to entry wasn't as hard as Flash was. So I, you got to see all these people experimenting with EDM, dubstep. A lot of people were uploading um like uh, f uh folk songs, like uh, it, it was like acoustic songs, like every other genre, and that made the music community feel more welcomes than anywhere because that site is a can of worms, honestly. But the mm. but the music community there was always fascinating to me. So whenever I see someone going from something as niche as the Newgrounds Audio Portal to like now all of a sudden they're touring, like that's especially when you're there to see that journey. That's like one of the most humble things that I in 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 my life to see, and I, it's really mm. it's really sweet seeing that uh, happen to people, especially when people doubt them. Yeah, and and like Newgrounds of old uh, is the SoundCloud. SoundCloud would be new grounds today basically yeah basically like, I'm, I'm sure a lot a lot of people are starting off there but now you know then you then you run into the issue of these communities and people trying to start it off of being oversaturated and oversaturated but then it becomes an issue and this is this goes for like anything creative mm -hmm. to like have to differentiate yourself yeah uh in some way while like consistently improving and everything i also wanted to touch on like having ytpmv is like so nice having like a creative outlet because like everything i do right like other than school if if i didn't have like this as a creative outlet like i can't draw i've tried like i've made some music personally but I, it's not for me i don't think and it's just like super nice to be able to just upload and have people watch it and know that like yeah it's not the biggest i'm not gonna get like huge off of it but it's still really nice yeah, like I, I tried. I, I think, I think YTP and V and YTP were the answer for a lot of people too, because I, I couldn't draw for shit either, and I, and God knows I've tried for so long, and <laughs> um, and then like I, I played piano for seven years, and I played trumpet for four in high school, and like I was, I was pretty good at it, but like it just, it just didn't have the passion that, that, that like I was looking for, and it wasn't until yeah, like I started doing uh YTP and V where it's like okay, this is niche, but I'm getting somewhere, like this is a start. And mm -hmm. a lot of people put themselves down because it's so niche, but it's like, like you said, we're in a, we're in a, we're in a entertainment slash internet age of saturation that people are looking for that niche. People think that shit's badass. 
And like I, I, I was kind of going under an existential crisis back in 2015 where I thought YTPNV was going to get me nowhere and I was like putting down the, the, the community a lot. But like the more and more people I found outside of the community that were really f impressed by my old YTPNVs and made me realize that I'm like, oh shit, no, people want this niche weird stuff. People like the fact that it has a weird name. And mm -hmm. I think if more people uh, take advantage of that and not think that they're wasting their time because they're not doing a more mainstream craft like playing an instrument or drawing then I think um, like more people will not have this weird uh, creative funk that I see a lot of people in at the moment. Do you have like a demo reel that that you show people? Um, I'm actually making one right now, <laughs> but uh, oh, but because like, cause I I'm taking a portfolio development class uh for my last semester. But um, when it comes to marketing my work, it's it's always interesting when I get this question because a lot of people in this community tend to not realize it's it's actually not that hard. Um. You know that saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know? Um, mm -hmm. that That's no different for this, and basically all I really just did was um, I started making videos outside of white and v to practice and everything, and then I started going to conventions, I started meeting people, I started shaking hands, and slowly and slowly I just built up my, net, my network more and more. I started talking to people in the YouTube space, I started talking to people in the game development space, and um, you'll realize that a lot of people in these industries all know each other. So the more and more you befriend these people, the more and more your name will start getting passed around. And um, I didn't even ask. Like, I remember when I was coming back from MacFest 2019, um, I was supposed to get a job as a computer teacher. But then that ended up not happening. So when I, when I expressed that on social media, being like, oh, crap, now I need to find a job. Automatically, right off the bat, I started getting messages. And people were like, hey, you do video stuff, right? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna need you to like do something for this channel. How about that? And then I was like, oh fuck yeah, okay. Like it like <laughs> you'll it, as long as you network, you'll find your you'll find yourself having jobs coming to you instead of like uh, instead of you begging for stuff. Like I I did not ask for any of these gigs at all. It all just kind of happens. Um, all I yeah. really did was just. Uh, and a lot of people think that it's pretentious too to introduce yourself as what you do, but that actually helps you a lot. Like I've been to so many private parties at conventions with with other YouTubers and game developers where all I did was go, hey, what's up? I'm Jab. Uh, I do video editing. And then nine times out of ten, they're like, oh, shit, let's work in the future. And then I'll get contacted. And um, yeah. that's really all it takes. And, like, being able to have a product that you consistently deliver and not have to worry about marketing, you can just ride the wave, have people that come to you. That's That's when you know you've really kind of made it almost. Yeah, and, and a lot of people uh, tend to, like, overlook how simple it is. Like, I know it's hard for a lot of you YTP and Vers to leave your house, but I promise you, <laughs> if you do, if you go outside and start talking to people in the real world instead of just online, then, like, it'll like your skills will be more beneficial to you, I promise. Even outside of YouTube and game development stuff, everyone needs video stuff because everyone's advertising needs to be video now because that's what garners people's attention. And, mm -hmm. um... Like if you just go to a party for once in your life, I promise you you'll meet someone that's gonna that's gonna need your skills. And um yeah, like that's that's really all that happened. And once you once you establish your name and your brand, especially like like go ahead and use your username. People use their usernames all the time. If and if your name is catchy enough and if people like your personality, like yeah, like people are gonna do the marketing for you. Like you don't even have to do it yourself. And that's it's so crazy how easy it is and how so many people just don't wanna take simple steps like that. And and you don't even have to go like your route. That's that's the beauty of how new everything is. You don't have to go the convention route because like being in Kansas, there aren't any conventions like that around here. Mm -hmm. But it's still possible to get noticed, uh, especially through Twitter now. Twitter seems to be the big one. Yeah, Twitter is definitely uh, the most, uh, as far as marketing yourself, is the most uh, profitable one. And yeah, like for you, for your situation, like you're in Kansas, like yeah, it doesn't even have to be conventions, like. You'd be surprised how many people in this industry just go to like bars and just go to uh like pumpkin patches and bowling alleys like it's it's <laughs> yeah. so it's so funny that like the answer uh that you have to give people when you market yourself is literally just leave your house. <laughs> leave your house. Yeah. <laughs> go and meet people, go and talk to people and use your Twitter uh to connect with them being like, "Hey, you you're cool. Let's work together. What's your Twitter?" Boom. And then you then you have that connection. And then tweet the same bullshit that you always do, and the next thing you know, that bullshit will get recognized by higher ups, and then, um, and like that's the thing, 
I like everyone's always scared of what they're posting, but like all the dumb shit that I post like interests people because of how niche it is. So like mm-hmm. that will get people's attention, and then they'll they'll be like, oh, this person's interesting. So like those are really all the steps. And yeah, demo reels are still uh are still beneficial too, which is why I'm making one. And um, it, it's still good to pitch yourself and everything. But yeah, like once you once you like go out and meet people, then like you'll realize that the process of getting a spot in this industry becomes way easier because as long, as long as you have the connections, you'll be good to go because I'm not, I'm not the best video editor I know. And that's what kills me because there are so many people in this community that are so fucking talented. There's some of the most talented audio and video people I've ever met, but they mm-hmm. just will not brand themselves. And as a result, they're just stuck in YTPMV. And that breaks my heart because like, if my dumb ass can get this far, I cannot imagine how <laughs> any of these people, I can't, I can't imagine how far any of these people would go. Some of these people would probably like work for actual Hollywood movies if they would just go out and show people how amazing their skills are. And sooner or later, they're going to reach the right person that will change their lives. And that just pains me to see how pessimistic a lot of people in this community are. It's just like people get mad at me when I talk about this on, online and whatnot, but it's just waste of talent sometimes. When I when I see yeah. people not do anything with it, and I guess the counter to that would be, well, I'm just doing it for fun, you know. It's it's not that big of a deal, but you never know how much you might enjoy it until you actually get a gig and you start doing it. Yeah, exactly. And I'm and and like if, if people genuinely just don't want to go far with it, like I'm not gonna harp on them too much too. But but like I said earlier, when it, when it comes to the point where they're starting to vent about how bad their life is and whatnot, and I'm just like, well, you have this talent right here that you could potentially change it with. And I'm glad more and more people are doing it. Like, I remember we were talking earlier this year about how you were getting some gigs, uh, working with some mm-hmm. artists and everything. And that's so cool. Like, like when I hear people have those stories, like, it's like Christmas to me. Like, it's so dope that yeah. people are, are, like, using this dumb thing they learned online to change their lives. Especially since it doesn't happen too often in this community. So, I, so, like, so like, seeing you and others, like, take those steps is really cool to me. Yeah. So, earlier you mentioned... Uh conventions uh and how kind of dumb the y2p name is uh are there ever any conventions that are like hesitant to approve a y2p panel because obviously you've hosted quite a few panels you hosted one at magfest too many games uh one in atlanta uh was that or was that too many games uh yeah the, uh, i did one in too many games and i also did one in atlanta at a place called momocon momocon um, okay yeah um funnily enough I've seen conventions be super down about it. Um, I, I like that, that. That was my worry too, that they would be hesitant talking about that. But every single time I applied for it, I would immediately get an approval email back being like, oh no, we so want to do this. But like, they always put us late. Like the MAGFest panel was at one in the morning. The uh, MomoCon one was at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> like it's always oh these God. super late panels and, and um, their excuses. Oh, this topic is so bizarre. It needs to be this late at night. Um, so like 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 getting panels at these conventions isn't isn't uh isn't hard at all actually, which is a big surprise to me. Do do you find that they usually like understand the appeal of it, or they're just like, oh, you know, it's probably big. Sure, we have a slot here. We'll just fill it. There's definitely some conventions that did that, especially down here in North Florida. That's not really uh uh connected with the internet as as much as other cities like Atlanta and Philadelphia. Like they'll just be like, "Oh, this is this looks weird. We want to do more weird things in our convention. Let them through." But when I go to other conventions like Magfest, Momocon, and too many games, like it turns out a lot of people that work the convention know what we're talking about, and they agree that they want this to be exposed to more people. So they're just as progressive as as um as like a lot of our community is. And I'll always get like people in the staff saying, "Oh, as soon as we saw this request, we immediately wanted to get this on. Like we knew this had to mm-hmm. come on," and um. That was that was the case with Momocon. That was the case with Magfest. Our uh, our panel manager was actually the one that said that like she just just approved it right away. Like as soon as she saw it, she was like, "Okay, nope, this has to be this has to be in our convention. <laughs> There's no way." And, that, <laughs> and that's really cool. I feel like there aren't very many panels that you could apply with to get approved immediately like that. Yeah, like it's it's really cool that we have such a interesting topic that not many people in the past talked about. Like we did find out that there was like this group. And I believe Michigan or something that was doing YouTube poop stuff, but like they weren't in the actual community. So I think us being in the community was helping bring it to a, uh, a to a more intimate 
perspective because we were actually able to talk about the community aspect versus these other guys like no harp on them i'm glad they're hosting youtube food panels as well but like they were just kind of talking about the videos whereas we were actually able to talk about the process of it and like people behind it and everything so it's really mm -hmm. cool that conventions have been down with it i think this year i've hosted let's see there's magfest or swamp con there's momocon uh too many games uh wasabi con i think i've hosted about six or seven of them this year damn yeah and after the uh, atrocity that was the magfest one it was it was good to see that we could actually pull off because every single panel after that was a really good success and i could not be happier with my co-hosts and how we've handled it it was just uh as long as the audio works we can pull it off i promise if any <laughs> any potential any potential convention employers that are watching this that saw the the magfest uh breakdown just want to let you know as long as the audio works we will pull it off yeah and you hosted with uh, uh Brady recently, Milkshake Man CP, mm -hmm. uh, other AKA, and uh, also Super Yoshi. Didn't you host a panel with? Yep. Uh, Super Yoshi actually lives in Philadelphia, and um, like he was trying to. I I didn't know at the time, and he wanted to go to too many games, and I was like, oh, dude, like I can get you in for free. Like you just like you're like the grandpappy of YTP. Like just just join our panel. We would love to see what you're talking about because i mean i mean not to brag but i'm i'm like really close friends with the staff at too many games because it's owned by screenwave media and uh, i love all those guys to death so all i had to tell them was hey uh super yoshi lives in the area and he's the creator of youtube poop and then they were like on board like yeah no we'll, we'll give him a panelist badge and we can get through and he killed it he did such a good job he um he was always like scared beforehand that he was like he was too shy and how he might crack but as soon as he got on stage like he was so confident. He explained so much of early YTP lore that none of us knew about. Like he yeah. he brought lore all the way back to 2004 before YouTube was even a thing. He was talking about how it like originated on Cheesy Art with like him and Mr. Simon and whatnot. And like I, he had so much insight that just made that panel so much more interesting. Um, because like I I love the other panels that we do. Don't get me wrong, but it's mainly just us talking about uh videos and like us commentating on it and showing how it inspired this and that, but Super Yoshi brought the actual, like, objective history to it, and the fact that he knows everything made him the perfect candidate for that, and I'm really proud of him uh, for coming out and talking about it. And funnily enough, um, he, he was, like, really doubting that people were going to want his autograph and everything, and as soon as the panel ended, there was a whole line of people asking him to sign their shirts, their NESs, their, their guides... And, um, wow, was, that's really cool. Yeah, it, it was re it was really cool seeing him finally get the platform he deserves, and um, mm -hmm. that, with other reasons, was why uh, Too Many Games was probably the best panel that we've had so far. Is that uploaded somewhere? Uh, unfortunately, no. Too Many Games doesn't uh, record their panels. Uh, but um, that's too bad. But yeah, like it's uh, it was still really cool, and I I can't wait to do it next year. Like I um, I know Too Many Games will be down to uh have us do it next year especially since uh a lot of people that were on were local yeah yeah that is really cool so that means if you're in philadelphia go to too many games yeah and then see go see, uh, go see jab and super yoshi have us play a dinner blaster across the whole expo because like we didn't <laughs> we didn't even have a panel room we had a stage that was in the same wow. room as the entire expo so like every single youtube poop and white TV we played got broadcasted around the whole entire convention <laughs> So even people that were just in the booth or like the market area or like the or like the arcade area was just able to hear all of our stupid shit across the entire Holy shit. convention. That was another reason why it was my favorite because it was just exposed to the convention in general. We were on the fucking uh, indie game award stage. It was oh really, it was really cool. I, I I knew the too many game staff did that on purpose, and I love them for doing that. That's hilarious. So, like, what would you describe as your driving reason behind hosting so many of them now? Um, does it does it stem back to the old YTP and V panel for at uh oh PonyCon or whatever? Oh BronyCon, yeah. Oh um, BronyCon. Do yeah. do a lot of people know about that story? I think I, I think I we don't should. Know. I think we should start with that. Okay. Yeah. Um. So BronyCon. <laughs> oh my God. Brony. <laughs> <laughs> BronyCon 2012. Back when My Little Pony was at a peak. Um. So like we were saying earlier, uh, the Pony Boomer era, where like a, a majority of this community was overtaken by Pony YTPs and YTP MVs, um, were starting. BronyCon started taking a hold of it, and I believe it was Sergeant Scrub Noob that applied. Uh, or, or, or it was either he applied or they contacted him, and they started giving YTP MV a panel, 
and the convention advertised it as YouTube pony music videos. <laughs> and like and and the description was come see the world of youtube pony music videos where people take episodes of my little pony and put it to songs by renard and everyone in the community was like are you fucking kidding me what the fuck youtube pony music video so the people that were attending this panel was a uh, uh sergeant scrub noob um mr 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 uh, Deep Rich 16, and I forgot who the fourth one was. Thunderhead. Thunderhead, yeah. Jesus, that's that's a name I haven't heard of in a while. Um, yeah. So along these four, um, our good friend Shalik joined in <laughs> because I think he lived nearby. So Shalik asked to be the fifth panelist, and they let him do it. And what happened was, um, while this was happening, our friend Quaid, uh, a.k.a. Mexican Sunflower, was uh, making this vaporware program called YTPMV+. Plus. <laughs> where the and, and the and the goal was Shalik was going to bring this program to the panel and advertise to people that if you just put in a song and a source that you want it'll generate it so for everyone that's been dabbling with YTP plus the couple years for the past couple years this was the inspiration it started off as a dumb joke because everyone was getting mad that BronyCon was uh, advertising this YouTube pony music video so it was this fake program that didn't do anything and the the goal was that Shalik was going to promote this on the panel and have a bunch of people uh, in the Pony community download it and then complain online that it doesn't work. <laughs> so like that was going to be the whole plan and it was going to be like this big scheme. But right before the panel happens, a fire happens, like a a light on the ceiling bursted and like all these mm -hmm. flames went everywhere. So like the convention had to evacuate and that was right before the panel. So the panel got canceled. Do you think it's for the better? Or in hindsight, yeah, it it, it was absolutely <laughs> like I I love Shalik, but like I feel like if we did that, that would probably taint the ever possibility of of YouTube poop or YTPMV ever coming back to the convention scene. So like mm -hmm. after that happened, um, I just had a lot. Of, I just heard a lot of people in the community humor the idea of actually having a real panel, and that combined with still seeing a bunch of communities outside of this talking down the art form. I was like, you know what? Yeah, no, why why don't we? Why don't we actually start um hosting these panels? So I started small. The first thing I did was me and my friend Trogdorbad, who we both live in the same city, we brought the first YouTube Poop panel to this very, very small anime convention called WasabiCon. And um we just started there. We 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 had a really tiny panel with like ten people come by and it wasn't really that great because um we did we we didn't know what we were doing at the time. <laughs> we were just kind of winging it. And we were our our excuse was oh that's the nature of YouTube poop just winging it and not giving a fuck. So the, the what year was that? Uh, last year actually, uh, twenty eighteen. Oh okay. Um, so we did that, and then I used that plus uh, I've helped out with other panels in the past, like at too many games and whatnot. I helped with uh some of the other panels. I hosted my own panel about uh exploring cringe culture, which is like me and my friend Ryan's video game corner uh, looking at videos that people label as cringe and defending it and whatnot so like i had these panels uh to back me up and i started applying to magfest because everyone was humoring that magfest would be the convention that we uh host a panel at and i'm like no let's actually do it so i applied for it and then a month passes and then we actually get approved and um despite despite the panel collapsing the fact that we brought in like holy shit like 400 500 people Oh my god, like, we filled that room up. Yeah, we filled that entire... I, I genuinely think there was about four or 500 people there. So, like, the fact that that turnout happened and the fact that the audience helped us turn that panel into a party when the whole audio equipment broke, like, yeah. that word sped around fast, especially when Drive 45 fucking ate a banana without peeling it. <laughs> like, that that helped, too. So, like, that... Be and according to our panel manager, that became, like, one of the most talked about MAGFest moments. So, like... Us bringing that panel to MAGFest plus the other panels I did, like, I think helped um, every other convention catch wind of it, because conventions talk, and um, I think that's what helped us bring it around from convention to convention. So, uh, yeah, yeah that, 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 was, that, was, that was pretty much how it started. It, it started off with the YTP and V panel at BronyCon failing, and then just me just being like, let's just do it, like, fuck it. If, 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 we, if we fail, we fail. If we approve, then, like, holy shit, and we have approved. Like, I've been getting so many people around the community to join us. Like, I never thought Brady would ever join us in the panel. I never thought fucking Super Yoshi would join us at a panel. 
I, like I, yeah. I, and I, I never thought uh, Emperor Lemon would join us in in a panel. I never thought. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah Emperor Lemon uh, joined us because we were doing a we were hosting a panel at his university, so that was a big help. Um, you know, I didn't. I like. There's so many people that I never would have expected would ever be down to do a panel like this, and a lot of them would always come back to me after the panel, being like, "Thank you for giving this community uh, a platform to speak about our our time in it." When like we've been kind of just like under under everyone's wings this whole time or like we were just kind of under the radar so like just knowing that i've finally been able to like give a lot of people like a place to uh for them to speak about it uh to speak about their craft and speak about their experience with it in front of a whole audience that's so down for it like that's that that's the most rewarding part even even when magfest even when the magfest panel like fell apart just the fact that everyone had a good time and there's fucking like half a thousand people when they're celebrating YTP, like that'll always be like a like one of some of the most best moments of my life, as cheesy as that sounds. Yeah, no, I totally I understand that, and I would I would agree personally. Um, do you find that it, like all the travel costs and everything to conventions? Do you find like hosting this helps quite a bit? Because usually they'll give like a free badge and stuff if you host a panel. Oh, absolutely! Like, uh. Nine times out of ten, I'll get a free badge for uh, for for doing panel stuff, and like it, it makes it more justified for myself and others to come because like you know you can like you can have fun anywhere, but like when you're at a convention, like if you're actually a part of the convention, that motivates you to do it more. And um, doing these panels and uh, you know being invited to like private parties and everything like helps like career aspects a lot. Like doing these panels have helped a lot of people with their uh, with their marketing and their networking. Um, my good friend, uh, Steve, who is a aspiring voice actor in the Atlanta area, like I allowed him to be the intro of our panel because his voice is really, really good. And he like put that on his resume and that's actually helping him out a bit. So, um, from a career perspective and, and like a cost perspective, yeah, this, these panels are a very beneficial thing. And I hope that I can bring that to more and more people, especially since, I, I want to get as many people in this community as possible to have some stage time. Even people that don't like me. Like, if you if you want your chance, like, I will give it to you. <laughs> like, don't, don't, yeah. don't let that stop you from, from asking me. Like, I will set aside all of our differences just to make this community progress as much as it can in the convention scene. Because the convention scene is the internet outside of the internet at this point. And it's booming now, too. Yeah, it's, 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 it's way more popular than they were in the 2000s. Like, the late 2010s have been the biggest, like, time for it. Like, especially when conventions like PAX and E3 are becoming so big, everyone wants to follow in those footsteps. So, like, everyone in this community being a part of this panel will be the contributing factor to making this, like, this could be huge. Like, YouTube food panels and, like, all these other panels for other niche internet communities can start becoming more the norm. And I want that, I, I want that to be the goal. I want all the work that me and the other people have done in this community to all factor into that being a normal thing. And, um, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's succeeding so far. Having, having all these panels happen with big personalities and everything is like the, the right steps. And I, I'm so excited uh, to see it go forward. Yeah. There, are, there are probably a whole bunch of niche communities that could benefit from that. They just need like that kind of person to take that step forward. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, and I'm and I'm personally glad that you're taking that step forward. It's really really cool to see. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. So, um, uh, you can you can say that what we're both thinking, but what would you say your least favorite panel that you've done is? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if that's your answer or not, but from from a technical pers- perspective, yeah, Magfest. But um, but like, I I was still happy about the turnout that came of it. Um. I, it, it still blew my mind that that many people wanted to come for YTP, but um, but there was a lot of chaos that happens. Um, like the audio didn't work. We had a we had a few panelists that uh, I wish was more sober, and uh, like there there was a lot of audience problems too. Like a lot of people were like trying to heckle us, and um, a lot of mm-hmm. people were were trying to um, kind of like challenge what we were doing, and like. I get it. You're trying to be funny because everyone wants to be a comedian. But if if you want to do that, apply for your own damn panel. Yeah, (laughs) for real. Audience hecklers were the biggest problem. But my least favorite panel was actually the first one we did with SabiCon. Because um, Mm. a a lot of people don't know this because I didn't really talk about it that much. But the reason why we only had 10 people was because apparently a lot of people did want to see our panel. But there was a dude in the fursuit that came in and uh, started making fun of our panel a little bit. So as, as he was leaving, I called him out. 
when, when he was leaving, I was like, oh, you're leaving? Where are you going? Where are you going? Why are you leaving? You don't need to leave. You need to stay here. Like, I started, like, heckling him and, like, and, like making fun of him for leaving. So he got pissed at me for doing that, that he locked the door from the outside. Oh, my God. And so a lot of people couldn't come in. And, uh, like, I got a lot of messages and, like, people around the convention were telling me, yeah, I wanted to see your panel, but the door was locked. So that was bad. And then to make matters worse... The person who unlocked the door also crashed our panel, and the person that crashed our panel actually ended up being the owner of the convention. <laughs> the owner of the convention. I'm not going to say any names, uh, but people can do the math if they want to find out who owns WasabiCon. But he came into our room incredibly drunk, and he was like, hey, what panel is this? And I said, oh, it's the YouTube poo panel. You're probably not looking for this. And then he started like storming up to the stage and he was like started screaming really really loud oh you don't think i'm looking for this what are you racial profiling me now bear in mind this dude's like white <laughs> like so i was i was speechless and like he completely interrupted her whole panel and i'm like what are you what are you talking about and then he said his name he was like i'm you know blank i'm the one that uh approved your panel and extended it and then he started storming out and he like he he scared a lot of people in the audience, and a lot of people in the audience left after that. Wow. And I was like, I started screaming back at him. I was like, "Thanks for not fucking giving us microphones," because he didn't <laughs> give us microphones. And he placed us right next to a Sailor Moon karaoke event, so like oh, all the well, noise in there started bleeding into our panel. Yeah. So yeah, that panel was a fucking disaster. But I mean, it was our first panel. But um, as 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 much as Magfest fell apart, uh. That that the WasabiCon one last year will always be the worst one, but uh, mm -hmm. and and you know props to the Trogdor Bad for being a part of that disaster with me. Uh, <laughs> he he came. Uh, we both went to Atlanta for MomoCon. Me, him, uh, our friend Brady, our friend Dom Gold, who's been doing a lot of the Florida YouTube poop panels with me, and our friend Steve. We were we were able to recover from that and made a pretty successful one in Atlanta. So we were uh, they were all able to recover from that and Magfest like. I, I'm still proud of the turnout that we had, and um, a lot of people understood that it wasn't our fault. So yeah, there's just so much you can do at like an internet panel without being able to show any of the examples. Exactly, yeah. Like like showing the examples was eighty percent of our panel, and um, I once once we get approved for this year's Magfest, I'm definitely gonna try to figure out a way we can do it more of a talking perspective that isn't just everyone introducing themselves. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, yeah. But like that that was just our improv plan because we had no other backup plans. So um mm -hmm. so like despite all that, Macfest was still one of my favorite panels. Too many games was definitely the my my favorite panel we've ever done, but um but yeah, Macfest is still up there regardless of everything that happens and props to Morgan for calming me down because I was really freaking out up on stage <laughs> when everything was happening. I was so mad at everything that was that was happening in front of me. But yeah. um, but in hindsight, it it was a good time. I'm glad that happened. And it also helps that, like, all of our internet friends that we've known for years, we're finally able to see them in real life. Like, that was a big culture shock for me, because I, I chose to come to MAGFest, like, October of last year. Like, really last second, and then just seeing everybody. But Oh, that yeah, that was your helps. first MAGFest, huh? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, like, seeing everyone that we've talked to for, like, nearly a decade all on stage together. Like, yeah, that, that's one of the, like, the sweetest moments I've ever, I've ever witnessed. And hopefully we can continue it again. <laughs> yeah, if Magfest would email you back. I'm still I'm still waiting for the email, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it to you guys that you promised us a panel this year for screwing it up. I I love you guys, yeah. but I'm I'm waiting on the email. Please, Please. give it to me. We we will do better this time. And just we just need the we just need the equipment to work. And and I was also gonna mention uh piggybacking off of your uh, wasabi con. Uh, I don't think that alcohol and YouTube poop can't really mix that well for panels anymore. <laughs> in the in two of the ones that we've done, uh, I I I, done. I definitely don't mind people getting a little bit intoxicated, uh, doing it because like that helps with people's anxiety and shit. But like yeah, like I I just wish people would just wouldn't get hammered. Um, mm -hmm. there's a term that we did when someone on our panel gets drunk. We call it the the rice pirate effect. For which, which people that don't know, the MAGFest animation panel 2016, Rice Pirate was hammered, and he crashed his own panel. So whenever people like do that, we just go, yeah, you Rice Pirated your panel, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love Rice Pirate, but yeah, they just kind of like... Yeah, just like you, can't, you just can't do that. Yeah, like you yeah. can be a bit intoxicated, but like, if you're hammered, like, just, just, just at least be the bigger person and be like, hey, I don't know if I can do this panel. Yeah. So... What would you say your favorite panel is then? Um, definitely the Too Many Games one. 
uh, with yeah. the combination of Super Yoshi being up there and doing it, um, like just spewing a lot of amazing history that we had no idea about was really cool. Um, our audio working, <laughs> and not only our audio working, but like I said earlier, having our stuff projected across the whole expo, like that, that pretty much made the entire expo our audience, which is really, mm-hmm. really cool. That was like, the, it, it felt like performing a concert doing that. Um, and just being in a, in a convention hall that I knew that um, I was friends with everyone that ran it, and it, it, it really made everyone on stage like feel super included and all that, and everything just yeah. worked so well. And then we went to a private party immediately afterwards, and we got to hang out and talk about the panel and everything. Like That was, that was probably the best outcome, and easily my favorite panel out of all the ones that yeah. we did. And then uh, you, you also hosted a panel where Mega64 was there. Which one was that? Yeah, um, that was a convention in St. Augustine, Florida called EXPCon. Me and my good friend Dom Gold, who uh, helps me do all the Florida stuff. So what happened was um, they gave us two panels, actually. And the first, and uh, Mega64's panel that night was sandwiched in between ours. So uh, they couldn't come to our first panel, understandably. Um, but like that was like that was the time we were doing all of our lecture stuff. And then the one afterwards was the ones uh, that was the viewing party where... Every now and again, we'll have a viewing party where, like, people in the audience can uh, come up and request YouTube poops and white TVMVs to play. And um, Dom Gold uh, is friends with the Mega64 crew, so um, after their panel happened, um, I started getting ready in the other panel room, and Dom uh, told Mega64 to, like, tell their fans to come over to our panel. So that was pretty much our whole audience because the convention was super tiny this year. So, like, Mega64 and all their fans started to come to this panel because they wanted to see what it was like. And the first thing I, I thought of was, we got to show them YTP and Vs of them. Like, that is the first <laughs> yeah. thing we got to do. So, I, I found a bunch of YTP and Vs that, that featured them. And Garrett uh, already knew what, what YTP and V was, and he's watched a few of them. So, Garrett was being entertained. Rocco, on the other hand, was, like, mortified. <laughs> like, the, I'll, I'll, never, I'll never forget his reaction when I showed him, like, Zarable's YTP and Vs and, uh, and Plurusex YTP and Vs. Like, Rocco was just screaming the whole time, What the fuck? What is happening? <laughs> There's so much happening on on screen, and and like I didn't I didn't expect this reaction to be that uh, that uh, shocked because I actually ran into him at a restaurant the the day before. Oh no, it was the same day. And I told him like because he because uh because like me and Rocco have talked before. So like when Rocco saw me, he was like, "What are you doing at this convention?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm. Uh, have you ever heard of a a genre called YouTube poop and white and We're doing a panel on that." And Rocco was like, "Oh yeah, the." Uh, I noticed a lot of YouTube poops use my pizza day video. So um, well, for people that went to that panel, I actually allowed Rocco to come up on stage and Rocco gave some insight about the next pizza day video, which is really cool. So, so Rocco's technically a YouTube poop panelist. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, so oh he, my God. I don't know how much he wants me to say online, but uh, but yeah, he came up on stage and like started talking about how um, people use the pizza day video a lot in YouTube poop. So he used that as a platform to give insight on what the sequel is going to be like. He filmed it in Japan and um, Holy fuck. he doesn't hold a long note, but he still does a fart. So like people can still use that as a bass sample. And that's what I said. I was like, okay, at least we can still use that as a bass sample. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so uh, honestly, that's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> So after he after he gave that speech, he went he we sat down and then I showed them the white TPMVs. Garrett was enjoying it, but Rocco was just completely shocked by it. So that happened, yeah. and since that panel room was the viewing party, we just started playing videos and all just laughing and hanging out. Um, they all eventually left because they had to go shopping, but um, but that was really cool. Uh, having such an inspirational source as Mega Sixty Four be a part of one of our panels. So like just having just having that like now we have both. YTP and Vers and YTP and Vs on stage with us is a, yeah. is, a, is a really cool thing to think about, and I, and I hope that <laughs> continues. I definitely want more people that we've sourced to to be on stage with us because a lot of people know. Like I remember, I mean, this probably won't happen because of current events, but I remember back in the day, John Tron was really fascinated by YouTube poops and YTP and Vs, and um, if we can get people like him to endorse them more at conventions, and that'll that'll help. Um, like the the journey that we're trying to go on by giving this uh, art craft like the respect that it deserves. Yeah, I agree. And there aren't like too many like there's quite a few good examples of YTPs just or YTP and Vs just using Mega sixty four as well. So that helps a lot. Yeah, like that that was the type of stuff I knew I needed to show Rocco and Garrett. And um, yeah, I, I'm glad they enjoyed it. Like I, I talked to Rocco afterwards and his mind was blown. And I think he even tweeted about it because our friend Dom recorded his reaction. 
and he just like tweeted in all caps, I just walked into this room and all of a sudden they just started showing a bunch of loud videos with my face in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was um good. Like as far as far as YouTube poop panel moments, like that was definitely my favorite moment was was showing uh someone that this community has looked up to for so long the videos and just seeing his like genuine reaction to it. That was yeah. that was really fun. And, that is uh, really cool. They're really cool people. Uh uh Garrett uh hung out with me a lot that weekend and we did a karaoke event together. They're really they're really uh laid back chill people and I'm glad that um they're 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 uh, a big contributing factor to this community. Even even if they don't even realize it. Yeah. And that that yeah. that weekend helped them realize like how big of a factor they actually were to us because they knew like Rocco kind of knew about the community but he didn't look into it. Garrett knew a lot about it and I know Garrett has talked about YouTube poop in the podcast uh, in the past on their Mega sixty four mm-hmm. podcast, but yeah, just yeah. having that exposed to Rocco was was really it was really fun and funny. Yeah, I, I you know personally I would consider you a pretty well connected person. We've talked about like you know doing video editing for other people, just getting your name out there. So in in hindsight, how do you think the YTPMV community compares to the other online communities you're a part of? Um. So I, I guess I'll start with the pros. Um, I definitely don't know a community that's funnier than YTP and YTPMV. I definitely think that um, this community has a big advantage when it comes to humor that a lot of people don't dare to tread. And I remember I was in the call with Shalik one day with some of our friends, and Shalik was talking about how he's convinced that a lot of YTPMVers could actually take a hand at stand-up comedy. And I, I agree. I think a lot of people could definitely take their jokes and craft it to a way where they can execute it through stand-up. And I think that's another venue a lot of people can uh, use their craft in that more people can take advantage of. And Shalik really did take advantage of that. He was a stand-up comedian in, like, the New York area for a little bit. And now he's working for uh, Hannibal Beerus, which is, like, holy shit. When, 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 when that got announced, the whole community was, like, shocked. And yeah. regardless of the landlord memes, like, that's still a really big accomplishment. Yeah, I was so <laughs> happy for him. It's insane. Yeah, like especially when um he was struggling for a while before that, and um so like, I I definitely hope that along with video editing and music production that more people in this community take a hand at comedy. I know Morgan has definitely been a huge factor in that. Like she's ghost written uh sketches before, uh a lot of a lot of the comedy stuff that she's written and a lot of videos that she's made like helped her get her name out there. There's a lot of journalists that look up to her, and everything. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the 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 pro the con. That I've noticed in white TPMV compared to everyone else is just man, this community is one of the most negative, pessimistic communities I've ever seen. Like everyone is so against trying to take this craft anywhere. Like holy shit, when we started doing these panels, just despite the positive reception got in real life, there was just nothing but shit talking online and everything. And someone even jokingly threatened to, and even if it's a joke, it's still fucking bad. They threatened to do a shooting on one of our panels. And that really was just like, dude, come the fuck on. How old are you? We are not kids anymore. You are like 25 and you're still making these edgy jokes that I expected you to make a decade ago. And um, ironically, our own community has been the least supportive of of, of doing this, but I don't give a shit. But um, but yeah, like the pessimism is what is what made me kind of leave the community in the first place, especially since I was a tale like. That was one thing me and Omni related on was how we were always the butt of a lot of jokes and like our friend Kamiar can relate to that too, where the community just wanted to be mean and mean spirited. So like despite me not enjoying the comedy of other of other communities, I just enjoyed feeling more welcomed. I just enjoyed feeling like I belonged there more. And um so like see, seeing the the positivity in those communities is what kind of brought me out of my uh, YTPMV funk that I was originally in, and I think a lot of people would benefit treading off of this community because um a lot of the community now, um and I'll be transparent about it, a lot of fucking people from like the IYTPMV everything channel and like the uh a lot of newer YTPMVers that just have the same piss poor quality YTPMVs all harassing me daily, and it's just like you're proving my point, like you're proving my yeah. point that this community is just a negative cesspool, and it's the reason why more and more people are starting to leave it because you guys are just one of the most unwelcoming communities I've ever seen. And ironically, it's the community I've been in the longest, but, um, yeah, but yeah, like that, 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 that's, that's the pros and cons. YTP and V and YTP are easily some of the funniest people I've ever met, but that can only take you so far if you're a complete asshole. 
and um, people will see through that. And for all these people harassing me, I'm not. I, I'm I'm telling you this to benefit you. The more and more you do this, the less and less people are going to take you seriously, and the less and less you're going to go far with anything. You need to drop the act, and and drop the irony, and start thinking about because like all these people are like are like adults or like becoming the like are are going to be adults. And mm-hmm. that's going to bite you in the ass, a bit me in the ass, a bit other people in the ass. And you guys mm-hmm. still have time to save yourselves from it. I'm not just saying that so you guys can get off my back. I don't give a shit personally, but like that'll be a huge benefit to you if, if you drop the act now. And we'll see if you take that advice or not. If not, I'm a big fan of, I'm a big believer in Darwinism and uh, Darwinism will kick you in the ass if you, if you, don't, if you don't clean up your act. Like a, like a more sophisticated form of karma. Yeah, basically. Yeah, or a more natural form, I guess. I, I, I think I've kind of, we're almost witnessing, like, the beginning of the split, I want to say, of just, like, people who realize that they can take it and use it in other avenues, and people who want to continue it, you know, for fun, and want to be involved with the people that they already like. And then just people who, I guess, just, I don't know, I, I, I guess I don't know how to classify it. It's almost like that they, that it's only them and they're not welcoming and it seems and like maybe the maybe they are and and it's just from our perspectives but i think like come come in like a few years it's definitely going to be a split yeah i've noticed a split happening within the past few years because there there is a lot of people in this community that have moved on from it you and omni talked about it a lot in the first episode and then there's people that get mad at people for doing that and I mm-hmm. never understood that. Like, if you want to make, if you want, if you just want to make videos for fun, that's fine. But just don't harp on people that want to like turn it into something. And um, and and I, I've noticed when you when you joined the community, like you joined around 2013, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I I I noticed that happening to you a lot because like you were always like a nice dude, but like a lot of people I remember gave you shit for like trying different things and trying to break out of the norm. And I always felt bad about that because I'm just like, why is this community so afraid of variety? Why? Mm-hmm. Everyone wants and, to do covers uh, of Keychain songs. Like it's it's so weird. <laughs> and what's funny is like I didn't even I didn't even really realize naive my like I was pretty naive about it honestly, and I wasn't really paying attention, which kind of helped. And I just cruised. Yeah, hey, like and, like, and and that's what I respected about you was like, despite what people thought about you, you're you're only you only wanted to entertain yourself, and I respect the shit out of people that don't get affected by by like the drama because I I was a vic- I was a uh, giver, I I caved into that. Like a lot of people would always like give me shit for wanting to entertain myself, and I spent so long being like, how can I, how can I entertain them? How do I please them? And I realized I shouldn't have done that at all. This community just sucks. <laughs> yeah, and and it's and it sucks that people get a sour note from it because there is a lot of good, and but you know, it's 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 just the overall nature of an online community at the end of the day. Yeah, and and it's funny too how like everyone that gets shit for, for like moving on or the people that become way more successful. <laughs> like uh, people gave Brady shit for trying to do uh, stuff outside of YTPMV uh, with like acting and whatnot. And now he's a pretty prominent actor in the Atlanta area. So who, who's the loser now? Yeah. Yeah. I guess I was just going to more so mention in my experience, like it's been pretty welcoming in the past. Like it kind of, it was kind of funny as soon as I like got decent, moved to a decent, or moved to college with decent internet and was able to upload videos not in 480p, that's when it just kind of all just took like a big upturn. I was like, damn, all these people that I've looked up to for years, I'm now like talking with. And then especially MAGFest was like a big eye opener. Like, holy fuck. (laughs) Oh yeah. Plus like, I remember a lot of people in the community, like were looking at you because you were like the token, like EDM YTPMV. I think I told you this already, but, um, that was definitely something that grabbed my attention and some other people in our chats were like, yeah, this dude like uh, takes EDM and he like does samples out of like bass drops, which is like something that a lot of community, a lot of people in the community are scared to do. A lot of people in this community are afraid to move past, you know, like chip tunes and video game music. Whereas like mm-hmm. you took the extra mile and like tried to make samples uh, factor into dubstep and EDM. And I never, and I've never seen that happen before. And um, yeah, I think that I think that helped your uh, reputation with the older people, and I'm glad it did because a lot of people that started white TV around the same time as you are stuck in these horrible, horrible negative communities, and I'm glad you found your way into this side because I appreciate this side a hell of a lot more. Yeah, and I and I appreciate you for saying that. Thank you. And it kind of 
it kind of just happened by accident if i'm being truthful <laughs> <laughs> well it's, it's it's the best accident i think that happens because um yeah when you when you first started in 2013 was like the time i i, I like i i turned 17 18 around this time and that was when i was finally starting to realize how much of a problem this community was and that was what made me worried but um as like i started talking to more of the older people that got out of that edgy phase and you started finding your way like i'm really glad that that was the route that we took because i almost i almost uh stayed in the negative side of white tpmv and that could have potentially ruined my life and fucking venturing out of that was one of the best decisions i've ever made and i'm glad that you and other people are are uh, taking those steps because like mm-hmm. this community just needs to stop being miserable <laughs> honestly yeah and i think and i think a big uh influx of like I guess positivity from Siva Gunner, at least in my experience, has kind of helped as well. They've had their own drama, of course, but um, yeah, but uh, but to be Omni expected. Omni is like a saint for do for like bringing YTP and V and and give us under together. What what I appreciate about Omni was um like he is the full reason why YTP and V and Siva Gunner are now all coexisting and friendly with each other. Because when Siva Gunner started in 2015, um I w- I was also guilty of this where we all just hated it. We all just thought this is stupid. This is just Flintstone bullshit. This isn't creative or anything. Like this channel's going to be dead in, in a few weeks. Uh almost half a decade later. <laughs> they were one of the biggest <laughs> things. But um but like it was thanks to Omni's optimism uh where he started joining the Siva Gunner community and started convincing more and more YTP and Vers that what they're doing is actually cool. And um sooner or later the Siva Gunner people started to like talk to us more and we were like, "Oh, these people are actually pretty cool." And it was it was because of Magfest where uh, more and more white TP and viewers were joining the Siva Gunner crowd. That white TP and viewers were also there to be Siva Gunner guests, and that allowed our community to get to pick their brains more. And by the end of that Magfest weekend, it was safe to assume that we were all now like happily uh, being friends with each other. And it was finally then when we decided to drop our pessimism and be friends with them, where it, they turned out they were like all fans of us throughout the past decade. Mm-hmm. They were watching all of our stuff since the beginning. They knew all of our inside jokes. Like Nate Mango came out with a, with his first white TV ever, and it has some jokes that I forgot existed for six years. There are yeah, so many jokes. Insane. Like like me me and and uh, and Ra- and my friend Rob were watching it, and like there there were jokes that people knew about, but then it just got more and more niche. He used the bones jumping sample. Who the <laughs> fuck knows that sample outside of our community? Like holy shit. So like. It was thanks to the community, or our, our side of the community, at least dropping their pessimism, where I realized, holy shit, they were they were, they they appreciated our content this whole time to think that we could have been friends with them the whole time. But I mean, better late than never, I suppose. But I, I I'll always appreciate the fuck out of Omni for merging our communities together, and and I don't think it would have happened any other way because I don't I don't know many people like I love a lot of people in this community, but I don't know many people that are optimistic and opportunist enough as Omni is. And Omni is responsible mm-hmm. for a lot of uh, the community, uh, like being friendly with each other. And I'm glad our community has someone as happy and passionate about, as him. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely a like a beacon of uh, optimism for sure. Yeah, he was a, he was a great first guest for this podcast. I can't I can't think of anyone better uh, to start it. Yeah, off. yeah, that's kind of what I thought too when I first was setting out to do this. So, all right, well, we're nearing the. Our, well, we're actually past the hour mark, but uh, <laughs> I, I certainly appreciate you for being on. Uh, is there anything you want to plug? Yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, yeah, the uh, I mean, the last thing I'll say is if, if you guys took anything from this podcast and the past podcast, don't be embarrassed of what you do and stop being negative and leave your house and your life will become a lot better with, with what mm-hmm. you've learned throughout the internet. Um, as far as uh, finding me, uh, I, I go by Jav50N pretty much everywhere. Uh, YouTube is Jav50N. Twitter is Jav50N, which is the best place to contact me. Um, and uh, I, on Discord, I'm, I'm the same name as well. Like you'll, you'll see all my contact info on my channel and whatnot, but that's where to find me. Um, hit me up if you want to talk about um, stuff in this industry. I, I love talking to people about uh, who are interested in getting in this, in, in this stuff, and um, we'll, we'll be friends. Thank you for tuning in to episode two of the YTPMV podcast. I cannot stress this enough. Thank you for the outpouring support that you guys have shown for this. I really did not expect that at all. 
Uh, you can expect more episodes to come up soon. I will be at MAGFest here at MAGFest 2020. You'll, you can expect some content coming up as well for that. Thank you.